Hello everyone and welcome to part two of my £2 PC project. In this video I'll be doing the upgrades to the CPU and the GPU to try and squeeze more performance out of this machine. I'll also be retesting the games that I tested in the first video to see how much of a difference it has made. Stay tuned to find out. So here's my option for socket 775 chips. I've got this Pentium which is 2.4 gigahertz I believe. That could be an option, but I don't think it's that much better than the dual core that's in there. And I've got this one, which is an E6550. Unfortunately, this this won't work because that bus speed isn't supported by the motherboard. So I went onto eBay and I picked up this one. This is an E6600 Core 2 Duo. Now this is perfect. It is the second best on the list of supported CPUs for this motherboard. So that's what I'll be going with. Now, as always with my videos, we do like to hunt for a bargain. So it has taken me a few days to find this one. But in the end, I did end up hitting buy it now on this one for £6.99. Which felt like a good deal as there were cheaper ones that would fit into this motherboard. But they were starting to get a lot slower. And then there wouldn't be too much point in upgrading anyway. So I was fairly happy to get this one. Should be quite a sizable upgrade over the Celeron that's currently in there. Now when it comes to GPU options, my options are a bit more random. I've got this 3870X2 from AMD. Now this would be a nice fit for the computer. But it is a little bit... Um, a little bit more power hungry than I'd really like and I'd definitely have to change the power supply if I was going to fit this one in there so that kind of rules this one out even though it would be nice to have something like this I've also got this GeForce 210 now this didn't really cost me anything when you consider the other parts in the machine that came with it it wasn't a machine that actually exploded one of my power supplies took out the motherboard but I was able to save the CPU RAM and two of these GeForce 210s now, I have made a quick short video on that on that system but haven't done anything more of that but this is one of the graphics cards from that so I could use that now oh, I've got this 98000 GT which I picked up brand new in the box last year I was a little bit disappointed to find it with the low power version. See, there's no, it doesn't require any more power. But it's still quite a nice card, and for the price I paid for it, I think this is going to be a lovely fit in that system. So I'm going to go ahead and pick this one, I think. Now it's just, to, now I just need to go and get everything installed in the system update the drivers and try and play the games again see how much more performance we can squeeze out of that two power machine so i've just got to remove the cpu cooler which this this model comes off very easily which is which is nice as you can see there's plenty of thermal paste on there i won't need to clean that off because that's a recent application Might have a problem here. That's not going to cut budge. Nope. So I just had to make a cut there and pull that CPU cooler off because it was not going to be coming out without that cooler mechanism off. But unfortunately, I have, I don't know if the camera can see it, some of the legs have snapped off and it retained this on. So I'm going to have to replace that with a stock cooler for now. But first, let's get this CPU out of there. Let's just slot the new CPU back in. Let's secure it in place. 
Now I should go and grab a Intel stock cooler and fit that. Nice little bit of new paste as well. I'm just going to interrupt this video. I've just installed the new CPU. The GPU's working, but look. The BIOS is only picking it up and setting it to 1.8 gigahertz when it should be 2.4. So, I've been messing around with this with, for way too long now. And I've decided the best way to go about this is with a BIOS update. And would you believe that still involves floppy disks? even with a computer of this age. Didn't think I was going to be using floppy disks at any point of this this build. But fortunately, this motherboard does detect my USB floppy drive. So hopefully it's just a case of telling it to use the flash program and updating with a newer BIOS. So fingers crossed. Now that the PC is up and running and all of the drivers are installed, I'm going to start running all the benchmarks and playing all the games again to see if it's made much of an improvement. I've got a small feeling that it might be a bit better this time. Let's find out. So here's the results on your screen now. And as a surprise to absolutely no one, every single game we tested runs absolutely perfect now, with a minimum resolution of at least 1024 by 768. As you can see from the synthetic benchmarks, the scores have increased massively, with the 3 Mark 05 scores almost 20 times better than the previous result. So, for just over £15, we have really upgraded the performance of this PC. It will now be able to run almost any game between the year 2000 and the year 2010, probably even some even later than that. So in total, this machine would have cost less than £30 for me to build, which is quite impressive really as retro gaming builds often command a bit of a higher price, especially on eBay. But this shows if you wait for the right deals, you can build a good system at a good price. Anyway, that'll be it for this series. If you enjoyed it, please make sure to like and subscribe, and I'll see you again soon.